What's going on everybody? Haunted Beard here. Welcome back and thank you for joining me today. Well, my last video I discussed the short films of one of my favorite directors, Ari Aster, and I want to continue that idea today and look at the short films of another one of my favorite directors and that is Robert Eggers. And you know him from directing films such as The Lighthouse and The Witch and also last year's The Northman. All three of those films I am a huge fan of, and I will say some of my favorite horror thriller films, not only of the last few years, but especially with these two, some of my favorites all time. So wanted to look at another one of my favorite director's short films, so here we go. Let's talk about the short films of Robert Eggers. So Robert Eggers directed three short films prior to his feature film directorial debut, starting with Hansel and Gretel. And this came out in 2006 when he was only about 22, 23 years old. The clock's in at 27 minutes. And this is obviously based on the very well-known and famous story by the Brothers Grimm of the young brother and sister, Hansel and Gretel, who go out in the woods one day and come across a candy trail that leads them to a witch's house. And right from the get-go, you can tell that Eggers here is has a very distinct visual style, and he's starting to develop that here. There's a lot of similarities that you can make just visually between this film and his film, The Lighthouse. And one of the things, too, at least for me, in Eggers' feature films, he is so great with just authenticity. And all of his films are set in different time periods, and they just feel so real and so authentic to those time periods. Whether it be the costumes or the dialogue and just the set design in general, they just feel all a part of the time period that it's set in. And, and he's starting to develop that here with Hansel and Gretel. This is a silent film. And every once in a while, he'll intersplice some title cards to kind of, you know, fill you in with the story and some of the dialogue. And there's music that is played over the entire thing. And this thing does have that authentic feel. It's not to the degree of some of his feature films. And obviously, you can tell there's budgetary restraints in this. But this feels like something, some lost film reel that was found from like the early 1900s and that somebody just found it and discovers it. It's just, it's very fuzzy, it's very grainy, and it just looks like it's something that's almost 100 years old. And you can definitely make comparisons between this and The Lighthouse just visually, with just the stark and high contrast black and white. Also, maybe a little bit of a comparison to The Witch. After all, this movie has a witch in the woods, just like his film The Witch does. And the thing about this, though, is obviously it's it's an early film. It's his first attempt at even making a film. And so you can definitely feel that. And this is him just kind of fleshing out and, and learning how to make movies. And there is a bit of a disconnect just with it kind of being a silent film. It kind of feels like it lacks a little bit of emotion and just kind of that emotional connection to the screen. The, the story is... Uh, it's a little light on the story. I mean, the first 12 minutes are basically just the kids just kind of wandering around in the woods and not a whole lot is really happening. And some of the shots are hard to discern what exactly is happening just due to kind of the, the grainy, fuzzy quality of it. And there's also some really kind of quick cuts and edits in here too that you can't really, again, register what you're looking at or what exactly is happening before he cuts to a different shot. Now, I do really like the look and the design of the witch here and I can't help make a little bit of a comparison to Nosferatu the vampire being that that's going to be his next film especially just with the long fingers the witch here has these long pointy fingers that gave me kind of those Nosferatu vibes also too he injects what I can only assume to be some actual dialogue lifted right out of the book and i have to read to you one of the examples of these because the the dialogue he chooses to to put in here from the book is is pretty great so at one point he cuts to a slide and this is the witch talking to the children and she says sweet children i will grind your bones to dust and mix it with your blood to make a paste and with your scrumptious skins i'll bake a crust and your small fingers i will lick and taste I mean, it's just nasty and gross, but it's pretty great. And so that part of this is pretty effective. 
So overall, this is by no means what I would say like a great first time effort, but your expectations have to be in the right place. It's something that I can now, having seen all of his movies, it's really cool to go back to directors early attempts and earlier films and just kind of see them develop their style and kind of figure out and and you're able to gather just them developing visually and, and seeing some of the themes that interest them that eventually make their way into their feature length films and so it's really cool to go back and see Eggers really start to develop that and and learn and grow and so if he doesn't make this he may never get to something like the lighthouse and so again it's pretty cool to go back and see these also too real quick all three of these are available on youtube so highly recommend you check them out but let's go to the next one so Eggers' next short film came out in 2009, clocks in at about 21 minutes, and it is The Telltale Heart, and this is based off of the, I'd say, pretty well-known short story by Edgar Allan Poe. And this is pretty fantastic. This really is starting to feel now like a Robert Eggers film. And this one tells the story of a young caretaker who is taking care of an old man who is an invalid, and the young man just slowly becomes more and more unstable and again just the authenticity and the realness of this is pretty great the set design is awesome the house that they used for this it really feels like this is a house from the 1800s that it's been around that long it feels lived in and it just it, it's dirty and it's like you can just hear the floorboards creaking and it just everything about it all the little props and set pieces are great the costumes are really great as well and the the look and the the makeup i guess and the costuming on the old man is pretty fantastic and really unsettling and i couldn't help but kind of making a comparison he reminded me of the old grandpa from texas chainsaw massacre and the the opening scene when you see him laying in his bed and then it cuts to like a close up of his eyes just and the look of this guy is just really unnerving and unsettling and Again, the, the atmosphere in this, Eggers just crushes it. The sound design in this is really good too. Obviously, there's a large importance and, and emphasis on the ticking of the clock as that kind of factors into sort of a narrative of the story a little bit. And if memory serves, I actually read the short story, but it's been a long time. But it, it kind of makes a connection between the ticking of the clock and the beating of the young man's heart or the old man's heart, I can't remember exactly, but there's a connection there. Uh, Eggers, too, does this iris effect where, you know, he kind of circles in on something and then we'll zoom back out, something that was done more often in an older silent films. And so another thing that kind of just contributes to that sort of authentic kind of old feel to this thing, there's a lot of kind of just longer, more extended takes, more static shots. There is a shot that is almost an exact replica in this film as there is in the lighthouse and there's very little hardly any dialogue throughout the vast majority of this up until about the last just few minutes or so and overall man i think this thing for a second effort and for just again a short film i think this is pretty fantastic you can really feel eggers kind of coming into his own here and i think this is is pretty excellent and if you haven't seen this i would highly recommend you need to check this out it's pretty great lastly eggers directed a film in 2015 it's actually the same year that the witch was released it was a film called brothers and this clocks in at 10 minutes and this one's a little bit different and it tells the story of these two brothers one of them's probably 12 13 the other one's maybe 16 17 something like that and they're sort of tense volatile relationship and this is the only one of the three that it doesn't really feel like a complete story to me it feels like he kind of plucked out a 10 minute sequence out of a larger film it doesn't really tell a complete story it is still well directed though it's well shot and this one is just more raw it has more camera movements and just handheld camera the emotions in it are just kind of more on the surface and just raw and kind of visceral as there's just sort of bitterness resentment anger and it all kind of boils to this sort of I guess kind of climactic scene that that scene I won't give away specifics or anything but it's a really well directed scene and it it's it's just it's tense and 
it kind of leads to this sort of shocking type moment. And so it's, it's handled pretty well. The ending though, I think it just leaves a bit to be desired. Like I said, it, it doesn't really feel like a, a full story. And I know it's only 10 minutes long, but the ending, it, it, it kind of just ends. It just sort of feels intentionally kind of ambiguous and it was just like okay i'm done now and it was this is more like he just kind of wanted to give you a flavor of something it's almost like a preview of something more to come um but again this one is is still a pretty solid effort and i think he gets he gets a pretty good performances out of the two uh, younger boys in it as well you can also see some of the similar themes between this and the lighthouse as well as there's this sort of like kind of power struggle dominant struggle between the younger boy and the older boy just like there is sort of a power struggle between the older man and younger man in the lighthouse and just some of the emotions kind of the emotional themes are similar between this and like the northman and stuff like that and so again you can just kind of see eggers kind of developing and coming into his own and really just kind of seeing his visual style develop and just so, sort of those themes develop as as what sort of themes and what sort of stories he likes to tell and so uh, brothers kind of just you know gives you another example of that so overall those are some of my thoughts on the short films of robert eggers i hope you enjoyed this type of video if you did please consider hitting that subscribe button i would greatly appreciate it that's all i have for you today thank you once again for watching and i'll see you next time on the haunted beard